In this video, we will demonstrate the fundamental concepts of sampling. Here is a slide pot similar to the one you will use in lab. The analog signal is shown in the plot as the blue signal, and the data points are sampled as plotted by the red signal. So if the sampling were done faithfully to capture the signal, then the red line would track the blue line. That right. is, a digital capture would capture the analog signal faithfully. Yes. So what if it doesn't track? Then we get the wrong answer. So there are many ways in which the digital samples are different from the analog samples. The first is amplitude quantization. That means that at every point, the only choices we're going to have are discrete values between some number and some other number. Additionally, there is an amplitude range. In other words, there is a finite difference, a finite range between which our samples must exist. So in our case, that's going to be 0 to 3 volts. The third is time quantization. Because we have to collect the data into a computer, there will be a finite time. In this case, we can see where the times are. A finite time that the data were sampled. And furthermore, one more, and that is the time interval is fixed. In other words, no matter how much memory we have in the computer, there's always a finite amount of it, which means that we can only represent the data from some minimum time to some maximum time. And these are the four limitations that exist in sampling. So let's review the components of a data acquisition system. This is the system that you're going to build for lab 14. Ah, yes. It begins with something we want to measure. In our case, we're going to measure distance. This distance is converted by a sensor. The sensor is connected to a circuit to give us a voltage. The voltage will then be input to the analog to digital converter which will give us a number. A 12-bit number. A 12-bit number. Software that we write will convert that number into something that means something, to a distance. And lastly, we're going to output those results to a display. So here we're showing you the data flow diagram. So the data initially is a resistance which gets converted to a voltage, which then gets converted to a number, and eventually it gets converted to a string, which is displayed. So let's look at the ADC parameters, the fundamental behavior of the analog to digital converter. The first is precision. The precision is the number of different alternatives. How many different values can we measure? In our case, it's going to be 12 bits, or 4,096 alternatives. The second will be the range. In other words, what is the minimum to maximum voltage that we can measure? In our case, it will measure 0 to 3 volts. And putting those two together, we can ask, what is the resolution? In other words, the resolution is the smallest change in voltage that can be reliably detected. Okay. These three parameters are related. In other words, the resolution is a function of the range divided by the precision in alternatives. 
In our particular case, the range is 3 volts minus 0 volts divided by a precision of 4096, and this will result in a resolution of 0 0.7 millivolts. So any change in voltage here greater than 0 0.7 millivolts is detectable by the analog to digital converter. So in summary then, if we have a really good sensing system and an analog to digital converter that has high resolution, what we're saying is that it has, it can convert and measure even the smallest change possible. So the higher the resolution, the better the sensor, the more expensive it, it's going to get. Exactly. All right, next we're going to see how the ADD converter works in our microcontroller.